Salaamu Alaikum. In the most holy name of Allah, the all-wise, true, and living God, to whom all praise is due forever for his coming and finding of the lost and found people of his father's house, the nation of Islam and tribe of Shabazz, Master Farad Muhammad, the great Mahdi. We forever thank him for searching among us and finding one in whom he could put his spirit, his guidance, and leave us with a leader and a teacher and now exalted Christ, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And we forever thank the Honorable Elijah Muhammad for praying that one would be in the classroom of God that he could choose to put over the nation in his absence. The Most Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, I greet you who are listening to this uh, presentation this afternoon with the greetings of peace and paradise. Assalamu alaikum. Briefly, brothers and sisters, I want you to know that I am truly honored and thankful to Almighty God Allah to be able to make this special presentation at Mosque Maryam. The body of knowledge contained in the Supreme Wisdom lessons given to us to study by Master Farad Muhammad through his chosen servant, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, introduces us to an entire new school of thought, which is the foundation of a whole new world. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan called for the Atonement Commission to be comprised of nine commissions in the late fall of the year 2000. To begin the process of the restructuring and reorganizing of the Nation of Islam. This assignment cannot be fully accomplished until we examine ourselves in the process by restructuring and reorganizing our thinking and our mind to be in accord with the thinking and the mind of God who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad and his Christ, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. When the Honorable Minister Farrakhan stated that the tenth system to the commission represents the brain, I began to process this information by putting it into writing the following documents prepared as a student of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad to be considered as a contribution to this commission. My approach to this subject is directly linked to our lesson assignment and is based upon the mathematical definition of what Islam is. Following Minister Farrakhan's review of my materials submitted, he felt that I should come before the body and make a presentation to the Commission and to the Nation of Islam based on my research and findings. I wish to thank the Honorable Minister for this opportunity and I truly wish to acknowledge the help of those persons in the seventh region who assisted me in the preparation of my materials, which includes Sister Rosalind uh, Mohammed for her computer and typing skills, to Sister Sharnet Mohammed for her artistic skills in rendering illustrations and diagrams, and to my son Rasul Mohammed, who facilitated their participation as the helper of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in the seventh region. Because it is very important, my dear beloved brothers and sisters, to give you the context out of which my inspiration came to present to the minister uh, my paper, I want to share with you a letter and a six-page dissertation that I was inspired to bring to him here in Chicago. On August 21 of this year, I wrote the following letter to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, to the members of the nine commissions, and the general body of students of the Nation of Islam. Assalamu alaikum. As a student and follower of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I submit the following material to be studied as an introduction to what I have discovered concerning the Supreme Wisdom Lessons during the last 28 years 
since the departure of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. The fullness of what I have to report will be presented, be it the will of Allah, as my thesis on the mathematical theology of Islam to the University of Islam as both an oral and written dissertation based on the lessons and the supreme wisdom teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Prior to the departure of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in 1975, he sat with some of his laborers, officials, and family members and set the standard of our lessons as the basis of our work today. He requested of us to only ask questions pertaining to our lessons. He further stated that we would be examined before our Savior Allah on this assignment. In retrospect, tracing back to our early beginnings in the 1930s, his words came to us as the second reminder of the importance of studying this body of knowledge coming directly from Master W. Farrard Muhammad upon his departure in 1934. In May of this year, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan addressed our nation in a three-day webcast from Mosque Maryam directing us to the same instructions given by his teacher, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, prior to his departure. He gently warned us to return back to our study of our original assignment, focusing on those early instructions to the laborers, which includes the lessons, the Holy Quran, and the Bible. As you may know, I have devoted a great deal of my studies to this assignment over the years and have made many interesting discoveries that link us to a more comprehensive understanding of both the Holy Quran and Bible from a more scientific and historical perspective. It has opened big fields of knowledge that engage truth on every new frontier of investigation and research. The great body of knowledge of the supreme wisdom is exactly that and can be proven in no limit of time, which takes us into infinity. This is why we say mathematics is Islam and Islam is mathematics. While in Mexico, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in 1974 instructed me further concerning the study of our lessons when he stated that the lessons would be the foundation of the teaching to the people of Mexico. This indicated to me that our lessons are indeed universal in nature and we must study how to apply them at all times as the basis of our work today. He also asked me to inquire into the government's qualifications for setting up a school in that country. Within a year, he was no longer among us. And ever since that time, I have been searching for a way to implement this assignment. I returned to the United States and formulated the Honorable Elijah Muhammad Educational Foundation in the late 1970s to continue in the study and research of his divine teachings and program and its application to a modern and scientific age. I am most thankful to Almighty God Allah for this opportunity to share with you some of my findings as we seek to improve the quality of our lives in the pursuit of happiness. Assalamu alaikum, most humbly submitted Mother Taneta Muhammad. Now, brothers and sisters, I wanted to give to you the details and exactitude of the words as I presented them to the Honorable Minister Farrakhan on the very day that the Commission met on August the 23rd here in Bas Maryam. And I entitled my paper as only an introduction, how the 10th system, the brain, is applied to the nine commissions in the restructuring and reorganization of the nation of Islam. This paper will be read to you at this time because I do not want to miss one connecting line or one connecting link which may um, which may not be received in the fullness of the meaning. I will attempt to equate the tenth system, the brain, 
to the reorganization and restructuring of the nation of Islam precisely to the lessons of the supreme wisdom. This body of knowledge called the supreme wisdom comes directly from God himself in person. Each new convert that enters the nation of Islam as a student must recite the 10 questions and answers of student enrollment before he or she is admitted into the classroom of God. And that is to be qualified for future positions awaiting them upon examination of their courses of study based on the lessons. It is this standard that is used to evaluate each student's progress to see if they are qualified to be fit for future placement by Almighty God Allah. You will find corresponding instructions in the 13 paragraphs to the laborers. Paragraph 1 explains that through Allah's prophets and apostles as the people's guide and example that his mystery is revealed. And those who follow the apostle would see the light. In a dream I had many years ago, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan was leading me through a tunnel or passage that led to a door which was standing open. Inside there was a large gathering of people. He beckoned me to enter and I simultaneously beckoned to him to enter. Once inside the room, I saw a large body of people seated like students in a classroom or a lecture hall. I looked for a chair which was pointed out to me. Once seated, I looked up and to my surprise, I saw Master Farrard Muhammad standing in the center of the room at a blackboard. He was writing the number 144,000. At the top of the circular shaped room, there appeared as if suspended from the ceiling a giant crystal chandelier. The complete number of questions and answers and actual facts in our lessons comes to 154. When the 10 questions and answers of student enrollment are subtracted from the 154, we have 144 remaining questions and answers. The number 144,000 appears in the Bible as the first fruit convert to God and his Christ. This is a figure representing God's elect that will be taken out of the whole body of new converts that God would work with to first square and then cube the nations of the world into a standard of righteousness. 144 cubed equals 1,728 cubic inches, which is equal to one cubic foot. In time measurement, that is by days, 24 hours in a day multiplied by six days equals 144. The seventh day in creation is called the day of rest and is sanctified as the Lord's day. The seventh day is equal to the early morning of the seventh thousandth millennium in which Christ will establish his kingdom on earth. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad stated that the whole scope of Master Farrard Muhammad's teachings is astronomy. The inner meaning of the first 10 questions and answers of student enrollment is designated as the Big Ten, representing the family of the sun and her nine planets. In its deeper meaning, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad compared the family of the Big Ten to the role of the woman who carries the life germ in her womb for nine months to completion and birth. To study astronomy, we must have a knowledge of mathematics, the universal language to acquire universal knowledge. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad has stated that a people who do not have a knowledge of mathematics cannot build and will always be subject to a people who know mathematics. I once asked the Honorable Elijah Muhammad if Master W. Farrard Muhammad continues to study and he answered me in the affirmative. So what excuse do we have not to study? According to the history of Jesus and his mother, also given to us to study by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad as a sign of our evolving and developing community, 
we read that mathematics was the number one subject that the prophet or the wise man required of Jesus to begin teaching him how to tune in. This knowledge was given to him to protect him in his mission against the plot of the enemies who sought to take his life. Mary and Joseph also had the ability to tune in. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad told us that one in every 100 of our people in the East also have this ability. The prophet began teaching Jesus, and because he was quick in learning, he mastered this teaching in three lessons. Then he tested Jesus' ability to tune in by giving him the greeting, Assalamu alaikum, to which Jesus responded, Wa alaikum salam. When the angel Jibril revealed the first revelation of the Holy Quran to Prophet Muhammad, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, he revealed it within a mathematical context in which letters, words, verses, and chapters are all mathematically coded. The Holy Quran was later arranged also by revelation in the chapter sequence that we read today. We will note that the angel Jibril also appeared to Mary in the 19th surah, which carries her name. In exactly 19 verses, 16 through 24, announcing the birth of Jesus and some words about his future work and mission, which comes all the way down to us today. Happiness, brothers and sisters, is the removal of stress. When we have the right understanding about ourselves and others and the world in which we live, if we look at paragraph one where the word stress is applied to our assignment, it may be neglect of duty or default in duty, which produces the stress-related ailments that we're suffering today because we do not have the right understanding of ourselves, nor our relationship to God, nor our relationship to others, <laughs> and to our relationship to the rest of the world. As we stay fully committed and focused on our assignment and mission, given in the details of the 13 paragraphs and in the body of our lessons, we will learn how to live happy and productive lives. And everything we touch will literally turn into gold. We are guaranteed that the restrictive law, when enforced, is our success. I have correlated the 10th system the brain to the supreme wisdom lessons beginning with 10 questions and answers of student enrollment which interest introduces us to the knowledge of God and the knowledge of self from the very first question and answer who is the original man this means that God himself is the brain of all operations that make all the other nine systems of the body work effectively the first mention of the word brain appears in lesson number two question and answer 28 with a reference to Yaqub's grafting of the white race. The nurse stuck a needle in the brain of the black baby at birth, putting him to sleep, which is the condition of the black man and people today and all over the planet Earth. There is a parable in the Bible given in John chapter 21 verses 1 through 14 concerning Jesus' disciple or disciples who are being taught a lesson by Jesus on how to be fishers of men. They were throwing their nets rather haphazardly into the water from the boat, trying to catch fish. Jesus instructed them from the seashore to cast their nets on the right side of the boat. When following these instructions, they caught 153 fish and brought them to shore. It is interesting to note that if we take the 153 fish and add Jesus himself, the sum is 154, which is exactly equal to the number of questions and answers in our lessons. And I'm footnoting here for us to look at paragraph three of instructions for further details from our Savior Allah. But just in general, it states that the use of these lessons given to us to study by Master Farad Muhammad must be used at all time with the new converts. It is the bait by which we will catch the fish. 
and we must prove at all times that our Savior Allah has come to deliver us the end of this present civilization and the beginning of a new civilization which will be ruled by people who will uphold justice, freedom, and equality and will be made the new rulers of an entire new world civilization. This parable may be compared to the catching and processing of the new converts to Islam who are being raised from the dead. The means and methods in raising the dead have varied throughout the years, but the foundation of our recruiting effort is found in the use, practice, and application of the language in the proper terms with the use of the lessons of the supreme wisdom which must be used in the resurrection of the mentally dead. These lessons are designed and patterned from the mind and thinking of God transmitted to his chosen servants, the prophets, as a guide for others. In the ancient land of our fathers, in Egypt, there stands in the middle and on the border thereof the great pyramid of Giza that remains to this day as the only remaining seventh wonder of the world. It was constructed on 13 acres of land a few miles outside of Cairo. Its original casing stones, which was made out of pure white limestone, are equal to 22 acres. Every measurement was built and designed by the architect to measure in stone a history of the world of the last 6,000 years and beyond into the seventh millennium. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad first drew my attention to the study of the Great Pyramid and its mathematical measurements when he stated to some of his followers and family members at the dinner table that if we wanted to get a picture of how our ancient civilizations were built, that we should study the monuments in Egypt. The number of fish, 153, mentioned in John chapter 21, is also contained within the measurements of the Great Pyramid. As one enters on the north side of the Great Pyramid on the 19th core stone, you have to move left 286.1 pyramid inches. This number of pyramid inches appears in many places in the measurements of the stones and the inner passages that leads upwards to the truncated platform where there is a missing capstone. This number of pyramid inches, 286.1, is called the displacement factor. In order to correct this movement to the left, which implies deviation or sinister in Latin, one must turn to the right, counting that same measurement of pyramid inches to get back on track. This leads the initiate or student to higher wisdom on the path to becoming a master. It is interesting to note that the second chapter of the Holy Quran entitled Al-Baqarah, the cow, contains exactly 286 verses and speaks of the deviation of the followers of Moses. Inside the Great Pyramid, there are ascending and descending passageways which are measured according to the alignment of specific stars. This knowledge was given to us also from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He stated that the pyramid was built in alignment to the stars and that in order to destroy uh, the pyramid and its meaning and its sign, you would have to destroy the stars to which they are aligned. He also taught us that the building of the pyramid was done by a mechanical mean of a hydraulic water to push the stones into place and that at this particular time that instrument has been hidden lest our open enemies discover its use and be able to prolong and extend their civilization. When we pass through the grand gallery that is constructed with seven tiers inside of the pyramid, we have an uplift that raises up beyond the stooped position that we're in when we reach those ascending or descending passageways. We come 
exactly 286.1 pyramid inches up so that we can really start taking a breath and keep moving in the direction of the truncated pyramid. We come then to a horizontal passage that leads to the king's chamber located on the 50th, counting from the foundation up, to the 50th core stone. From the 50th core stone to the pyramid's platform, we measure another 153 core stones. Pay attention to the word course because this is going to come up later as we move into the second part of my presentation, the word course and courses. We will note the recurrence of this number 153, which referred to the number of fish that were caught by seven disciples in the parable of Jesus and the fishermen. Now let us suppose that the missing capstone represents Christ himself. It is believed that the construction of the uh, capstone was never done, though there are some who believe that it was originally made out of gold and some believe that it was originally made out of um, crystal, that it was never really made at all. It was left there and designed by the architect to represent the Christ in the millennial age. And it was also there to represent a people who had been rejected, like the rejected stone that we read of in scriptures. So if then we say that this capstone represents Christ in his glory, and we add together the 153 core stones that led from the king's chamber to that truncated uh, pyramid, we come exactly to the lesson code again, 154. When 154 is divided by 7, we get 22.7, which represents the fraction of pi. And among the, our ancient people of Egypt, they use fractions and not decimals. So you can read it as a decimal, 3.14 they generally give, or 3.1459, and we know it goes on into affinity and they can't find the end of it. They cannot round that off. But let us see later what we can do with a fraction. As we review our entrance into the pyramid, we will recall that it was on the 19th core stone, which answers to the mathematical code of the Holy Quran. And we also found that the second chapter, the very second chapter, Baqarah, the longest chapter in the Holy Quran, contains exactly 286 verses, which represents the deviation and also the correction to get back on track. The Bible, too, in this specific instance, also answers to the mathematical code of 19. We read exactly in Isaiah 19, verses 19 and 20, a reference to the building of this monument, the Great Pyramid, standing in the middle of Egypt and on the border thereof. This hidden wisdom is contained in the use of letters and numbers and words that is a part of the Jewish numerical system called gematria, or gematria, I think it is gematria, where letters, the Hebrew letters, were identified and used as numbers, which as a point of reference, the rabbis concealed, which is called the Kabbalah and uh, other Talmudic writings, but they knew the deeper secret meaning of these scriptural passages. And ultimately what happens is that as they added up the letters and the words that comprise the 19th uh, verse of chapter 19 of Isaiah, it comes to 5,449. Now what is interesting is that is the exact height of the Great Pyramid that takes you to the truncated part, which means that there's something missing. Interesting in the study of our lessons, in the student enrollment, we are given the birth or the birth date of uh, Christianity, Buddhism, uh, and Islam. Christianity is given as 551 years. So if you add that 551 years to the 5,449 figure, we get 6,000, which then lets us know that at the end of the 6,000 years that Christ will come and he himself may represent then in this analogy the missing capstone and 
also the rejected stone that the builders disallowed hmm, until restored in the messianic age with the coming of the Messiah or Christ who will establish the kingdom or his kingdom on earth with a people that is considered to be no people at all. This rejected stone becomes the chief cornerstone of the building and the foundation of God's new kingdom referred to in the scriptures as the 7,000th millennium reign of Christ on earth. Could anything fit so perfectly? If we add together all those series of numbers that I identified as the displacement factor, that is 286.1 pyramid inches, that is counting 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, all the way up to 17, the result uh, of those digits comes again, astoundingly, uh, 153. Again, representing the number of fish caught by Jesus in the parable, revealing the number code of our lessons. The number 17 here, with six zeros added to it, comes to the figure 17 million, which represents the lost found members of the nation of Islam in America when we were found by Master W. Farrard Muhammad. Every number, every letter, every word, every syllable has a profound connection to the mathematical theology of Islam as we are taught in problem number 13. The Holy Quran reveals, and certainly we have made the word to have many connections for their sake so that they may be mindful. Master Farrard Muhammad, God in person, laid the foundation of his new world order on a square number in mathematics, which is 12. When this number is squared, it gives us 144, which refers to the 144,000 elect. We will also see its reference to point number 12 in the Muslim program of wants and beliefs. Our lessons are mathematically coded for each student to enter the mathematical matrix of the supreme wisdom. The keys to the methodology and approach to our study is given by the master himself in letters, numbers, words, and syllables along with their pronunciation. So when you use this system, what happens is that you're able to look into everything around you, the atom itself, the physical world, the spiritual world, mental planes of consciousness, and you will begin to see that which others do not see. You will hear that which others do not hear, and you will perceive and see that which others are not perceiving and cannot see because they were not given this methodology, which was learned by the Jews and also has determined why they are the rulers of the present world order, how they happen to rule over their brothers the, of the Caucasian race. In the Supreme Wisdom Lessons, published recently in book form, we are given 13 paragraphs of instruction to study, followed by problem number 13. When these numbers are added together, the result is 26, which is equal to the 26 letters of the English alphabet, which is coded in the methodology of the 13th problem. And we have the 10 numbers. That is, when we recite 10 questions and answers of student enrollment, we have the 10 numbers of the mathematical language which defines the deepest meaning of Islam. The basis of our work today, brothers and sisters, is to make our brains and our minds work in perfect alignment with the mind and thinking of God. The scientists come among us asking questions, helping us to tune into a higher frequency of thought and state of mental consciousness. As the Honorable Minister Farrakhan has entitled his 18th study guide, Rising Above Emotion into the Thinking of God. We, the Nation of Islam, lose no time. Ask questions and learn all about yourself. What are you doing today for yourself? Your brother from the East wants to know and hear from you at once. We find that written in one of our problems, problem number 31. Okay. I have attempted to demonstrate that the 10th system, the brain, represents the working of the mind of God through the example 
of the body of wisdom that he brought to us called the supreme wisdom teachings now of the honorable Elijah Muhammad the supreme wisdom lessons is like the illuminating book of the divine scriptures of both Holy Quran and Bible the great pyramid of Egypt serves as a testimony in stone of this great truth as we begin our courses of study in developing a national curriculum for all members of the nation of Islam we are all working from the same foundation of truth hopefully to be approved by God now brothers and sisters I read to you exactly what I presented to the Honorable Minister Farrakhan in the second part of my presentation I am going to go further into the formula of Pi and how it applies to the dynamics of our lessons and how it applies to the practical everyday life and as I enter into this study I want to utilize the vision uh, of Ezekiel and I will explain that when we get to the diagram the discovery of Pi in our lessons leads us to the entrance of the mathematical matrix of the supreme wisdom lessons and the theology of time computer game the Honorable Minister Farrakhan has stated that whoever draws the diameter of your knowledge prescribes the circumference of your activity over the last several decades I have attempted to apply the lessons mathematical code to my everyday life's experiences I was inspired to look more diligently into its application as a result of the words of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad directed to his labors and family members at the dinner table in Chicago just prior to his departure he also instructed me concerning the importance of the lessons in teaching others in Mexico during these many years since his departure I have attempted to find innovative ways to apply this wisdom that he shared with me my first mathematical breakthrough came in the late 1970s and beginning years of the 1980s I was introduced to both the mathematical 19 base um, revelation of the Holy Quran and intuitively I came to see its relevance to the mathematical complement of 22 7 pi discovered in our lessons as I previously stated and I will repeat this I divided the number 7 into 154 which resulted in 22 which combined together 22 7 represents the fraction of pi I applied the discovery of pi to the whole complex of the Muslim program presented by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad which I have configured in various diagrams which includes reading assignments books and study guide material all programs for home study and as a computer game for the entire family I reviewed the 13 instructions to the laborers concerning the structure the ideal structure of the ideal mosque temple school educational center and economic program and discovered a whole system of reorientation linked to re-education and training beginning from the grounds of Mosque Maryam an educational center to be disseminated throughout our communities both at home and abroad I discovered that in the working of these two main mathematical formulas pi as a fraction 22 7 and the 19 mathematical code of the Holy Quran that I was able to synthesize the body of knowledge contained in the supreme wisdom lessons and the Muslim program in a mathematical way the sign of Jesus history and his mother are paramount to this study especially in the area of Jesus education and training which took place in Egypt as a sign the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that Jesus studied at Peach Pyramid to which he also made a reference in the theology of time lecture series in 1972 to Al-Azhar University also as a sign many years ago I had a dream in which I was visiting Cairo Egypt I was inside an apothecary 
and a fragrance shop. My eyes were attracted to a small glass beaker containing a container that held a liquid the color of amber. I asked the shopkeeper the name of the fragrance and she told me that it was peach. When I awakened, I was puzzled over the meaning of that dream. Within several hours time, I mentally turned the letters of the word peach around, scrambled them around, and it spelled Cheops. I then realized that Jesus' study at Peach Pyramid was a code for the master's training at the Great Pyramid of Cheops. The key to the mathematical matrix of the supreme wisdom lessons and the theology of time computer game that I am developing is based on the mathematical formula of pi. Our assignment of the supreme wisdom lessons is designed to teach a student how to tune in to the mind of God through a series of questions and answers, which was the way that the prophet or the wise man taught Jesus how to tune in by asking him a question and he would then give the answers. We, brothers and sisters, are actually enrolled in the divinity school of God, chosen and elected to be made the future rulers of a new world order born from a new world of thought. As we continue to process this information, we will become a light-bearing sun reflecting Christ consciousness from within. By following this path of enlightenment with further instructions from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, we too will become a light unto the world. Thank you for your patience, submitted by a fellow student and follower of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Sister Tanetta Muhammad. Well, that ends, brothers and sisters, exact word per word with a few commentaries that I made uh, presented to the Honorable Minister Farrakhan. And before I go into the second part of my presentation, uh, which will show you one of the diagrams, I have many other diagrams, but since this is just the introduction, I have only one diagram that I am going to explain how the system works in the course of our re-education and training. I'm going to draw an analogy of my diagram presentation to the mechanics, to the mechanics of the great mother wheel or plane as we have been taught by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad who refers to the mechanics of the wheel to Ezekiel's vision of a wheel in the middle of a wheel. The second reason for making this analogy of our supreme wisdom lessons to the great mother's wheel is to draw our attention to the vision-like experience of the Honorable Minister Farrakhan, who was taken to the wheel to be in direct communication with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, which took place in Mexico in 1985. There are various quotes from the messenger's writings on the mother wheel and Ezekiel that link directly to our studies. First of all, you will note that in our studies, particularly beginning with lesson number two, which the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, symbolizes in those 40 questions and answers, the making of a man, the making of a very special man who is being prepared, all right, to be changed into a new people and to become the masters of a new world order that is to take the place of Satan's world. So the Savior is pointed out as being the Son of Man. The Son of Man. They looked for that mystery God for trillions and trillions of years. And they came to the conclusion that there is no mystery God that he is the son of man. And we cannot point or to any other object of worship, a statue, fall down and worship, or any other means. Spirit cannot be uh, God. The spirit itself has to be contained within a person, okay, who is highly evolved. So a quote from Message to the Black Man in America, 
And you'll note, Son of Man is mentioned at least four, five times in lesson number two. And also, the Son of Man, and not a spook, who measured all the planets and their distances and the speed of sound and the speed of thought, is not done by a spook. They are actual facts done by W.D. Farrard, or Master Farrard Muhammad. Now, this is what he said on page 14, or page 17. He pointed out a dreadful looking plane that is made like a wheel in the sky today. It is a half mile by a half mile square. It is a humanly built planet. Listen to that. A humanly built planet. It is up there and can be seen twice a week. And he ends it by saying it is no secret. Ezekiel saw it a long time ago. Then he continues. The sign of the Son of Man would be seen in the heavens. The tribes of the earth would mourn. They will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. That is from Matthew 24, 30. Now notice Matthew starts with a sound and we're going back and implementing why words and letters, etc., are taken apart and you will begin to see the analogy how it works. The first sound in Matthew is math. So mathematically and mechanically, we have the structure of the wheel, which is exact dimensions that are fulfilling a specific purpose. He goes on, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, to tell us that the vision of Ezekiel's wheel in a wheel in the sky is true if carefully understood. There is a similar wheel in the sky today which very well answers the description of Ezekiel's vision. And he says, this wheel corresponds in a way with the sphere of spheres called the universe. The great wheel which many of us see in the sky today is not so much a wheel as one may think in such terms, but rather a place made like a wheel. The like of this wheel, like plane, was never seen before. The similar Ezekiel's wheel is a masterpiece of mechanics. His vision of the wheel included hints on the great wisdom of Almighty God Allah that really he is the maker of the universe and reveals just where and how the decisive battle would take place in the sky. Ezekiel saw wheels in the middle of a wheel. This is true. The universe in the universe. These are the words from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. It is made up of revolving spheres. There are wheels in the wheel. The present wheel shaped plane known as the mother of planes is one half mile by one half mile. That is 2,640 across and 2,640 square all around. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said in the lectures of the theology of time that it's one mile straight down to the center. So that means it's like a concave and oval-like, but it is awesome. And, and he said it was dreadful to look at. So it is the largest mechanical made object in the sky. It is a small human planet. He also stated that a whole new civilization is on that wheel. Now this is very fascinating. When I looked up Ezekiel as a result of making my diagram, I, I was very, very stunned to find that the very first chapter of Ezekiel, which describes how he was called by the river Shabar in the land of the Chaldeans or in ancient Babylon, no? That he saw um, like this light coming, so dazzling, like a whirlwind, it says, out of the north. And it was enfolding, it said, in light and in fire of the color of amber. And everyone knows that amber is a resin that is hardened and contains the colors of a yellow uh, um, orange tone. And we recently uh, saw photos that were taken and videoed by a Mr. Uh, Diaz in Tepotzlan in Mexico at one of our conventions approximately a year or so ago 
and he brought these dazzling photos that gave proof that the Honorable Minister Farrakhan truly had that experience on the wheel in the same place. This photographer, nearly in the same year, he photographed this particular object that had the color of amber. Now, the further description of Ezekiel goes on and on, and by the time you reach the 16th verse of the first chapter, Ezekiel says what he saw were these four living creatures, and they all had the appearance of a man. Now, just pay attention to this. A man operating the wheel. Those that are with him are men. Though they're described with wings, up under their wings are hands. Isn't that something? And they have feet, like kind of like burning brass, it said. And then it says that above the firmament of this object, it was like the color of a terrible, these are the words from Ezekiel, uh, verse 22, first chapter, a terrible crystal. So I wanted to know what was this terrible crystal. And it gives a reference later down on the 26th verse, and it indicates that when you looked up above the firmament, which was this terrible crystal, there was a throne. And on the throne was the appearance of a man. That is why Ezekiel's vision is absolutely tantamount to being able to describe the phenomenon of the mother's plane because Master Farad Muhammad's first and greatest sign when he appeared in 1930 was to point out this miraculous uh, plane which is the mother's wheel and the rest of the information that has been shared with us about what is on that wheel. And imagine the Honorable Minister Farrakhan had an opportunity to be taken by a little wheel into the main mother's wheel to have the experience of communicating directly with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad so that there would be no doubt in our minds that this is real, that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad lived and he's on another plane of existence, <laughs> mentally, physically, and spiritually. Now, the commission was appointed, and look at how interesting this was. I stated that the last 28 years, I have been studying how to present my study and my research, inspired from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's words, how I would have an opportunity to present that. And it has been exactly 28 years to this year since the departure of the messenger. And now, on top of it, the first chapter of Ezekiel, which describes this phenomenon, 28 verses of chapter 1. The very next chapter, chapter 2, it says, Ezekiel commissioned. It uses the word commissioned. And it has exactly 10 verses. And that, to me, is comparable to what the Honorable Minister Farrakhan, son of man, another son of man, he says, go to the rebellious house of Israel. They are stiff-headed and rebellious. And he said, and don't pay attention to their mean faces and their harsh words. You go and you teach them. Anyway, I am with you. I am there to back you up. Look at that. And then he commissions, it says Ezekiel commissioned, and he commissioned the nine commissions and now with the 10th commission, the brain occupies exactly the number of verses that you read when Ezekiel is commissioned in the second chapter. The next most important part, I mentioned earlier that there are 40 questions and answers to lesson number two. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that that was uh, guiding us to the making of a man, a new man, the son of man. And that's where the son of man appears. There are exactly 40, 40 chapters to the beginning of the construction, re, listen to this, restructuring, reconstitution, reorganization of the temple that would be set up in the millennium age. And that then brings the number of chapters of Ezekiel to 48. I am telling you, brothers and sisters, from my own experience, every single day, Every morning when I rise up for prayer, 
and study my Quran and study the lessons and study the Bible or points of references that may come to me that I'm continually receiving new and information that is so powerful that I can hardly write it down, I can hardly retain it um, in my mind, but I want that same spirit to come to you and be inspired with the same assignment. I'm not studying anything any different from any one of you, any one of us. So I wanted to point that out because I think that that's very, very significant. The, the next uh, aspect of my presentation has to do with a diagram and how this wheel in a wheel concept uh, came to me. Now I've quoted what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has said. So I'm going to take my pointer and I also have a marker board here so that may Allah guide me to present this next portion of my presentation in a way that uh, you will have understanding. We're now going to focus on this diagram. At the top, a wheel within a wheel. So with my previous explanation, you can now connect to Ezekiel, the messenger's words, and the minister's vision. It says the Supreme Wisdom Lessons Diagram 1. This is the way we start. In the center of this wheel of color, representing the seven colors of the rainbow, and the seven colors of the rainbow are mentioned as a bow that was seen above the sapphire throne in Ezekiel in 26. And there was also the bow that comes after the rain, so it's like the rainbow. So we know the refraction of light through a prism will give us these seven colors of the rainbow. Now the center represents the universe. And recall that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad stated in the book, Message to the Black Man, that the creation of this wheel was made like a universe in a universe, and it's constantly pulling up things into our view. So we have the flag of Islam, which is the universal flag. We have the crescent moon, in its first quarter, we have the five-pointed star against a red sun uh, background. Now, if you look closely at this um, flag, you will see that the star has five points. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that that represents our five uh, senses. Now, I'm going to take us a little bit deeper into what I think we can uh, understand from this. These two points dissect the circle so that we count five, six, seven. Seven points in this center of the sun. Now around this are seven colors of the rainbow radiating out. Now before I go on to the explanation of what those seven colors represent, look down here. Six sets of lessons equals 154 questions and answers divided by 7 equals 227 formula for pi. Now you know if you multiply 22 by 7, you can come back to the whole figure of 1 pi 4. So the perfection of the zero or the perfection of the move into a full circle is only arrived then if we use a fraction and not if we use a decimal. Okay? So the 53 is incomplete without adding the God himself. So he is like the one in front and guiding. So this supreme wisdom comes like that to us. It is a circle within a circle of the sphere of his wisdom. He initiated himself in the beginning. And how did he do that? And this is where I wish for your attention to see if you understand this. Where did pi originate from? As you know, the universe is the spirals, circles upon circles, the universe within universe, spheres within spheres, as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad pointed out. God began in the making of himself in darkness, a light of himself. But the Honorable Elijah Muhammad pointed out in the theology of time that he um, 
first had to draw a diameter of himself. Then after he drew the diameter, then he made a sphere or a circle to encompass that which his brains conceived within that circle of knowledge that he himself was creating. Now, <clears throat> he said, nobody, nothing can come into existence unless it comes out of that circle or body of wisdom of the God's first creation of himself. So therefore, I use this sphere, this sphere, this circle, and it will enlarge in the next diagrams, and more material will be added to the colors of the rainbow that you see here. So if pi itself originates with God, then pi is the perfect mathematical equation to prove that our lessons that were designed and given to us by God is the continuation of wisdom of worlds out of worlds of a new world of thought into the building of a new kingdom based upon the principles of mathematics so that mathematics is Islam, Islam is mathematics, it is eternal, it is infinite, it goes on and on and on. And the scientists could not see an end to his wisdom. They all had to fall down, the 24 scientists, because they could not see an end to the great wisdom of Master Farad Muhammad. Now, another um, example I'm going to give you here is that this color wheel is the main diagram that opens up to the rest that will be shared with you perhaps in another tape. If the five-pointed star represents our senses, we also can derive our Islamic studies. How is that? We have five pillars of Islam. We have the five theoretical beliefs and the five uh, practices of Islam. We have our five daily prayers to which we add, if you take these two points, uh, two more prayers, which really brings the number to seven. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that when you rise in the night, you should recite another prayer or even another prayer in the night time added to your five daily prayers that would bring the number to seven. Another very fascinating thing is that we can find the flag of Islam, the flag of Islam in the Bismillah, the opening Bismillah and the Bismillah statement over 113 surahs. And one would say, how do you do that? Well, I'm going to go to the chalkboard. When we say Bismillah, bis. Mila, okay, not too good, but Bismillah equals seven letters. Okay, then in the next part of the statement, it's Rahman equals six letters. And Rakim equals six letters. Okay, that is the opening Bismillah in Al Fatiha, and it's over all of the surahs as we know, except Surah 9. What do you see as you look at these numbers? Do you see any relativity to the histories that we are taught about the sun? the moon and its separation from the earth all right it is this way seven six all right seventy six trillion seventy six t seventy six trillion years ago the honorable elijah muhammad taught us that the sun came into uh, its present existence uh, in our solar system. So we have 76 trillion years ago for the sun. And then I'm surrounding 66. Okay, we know what happened 66 trillion years ago. That was the moon explosion. Now we can do something more with these numbers 
because we have its relevance to the earth, the planet. And by the way, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad answers the question and ends in um, lesson number one, uh, question and answer nine, which one and nine is a 19 again. <laughs> but if you put that together, uh, he says that the sun, the moon, and the star are planets. That's the original form that they are coming out of planets. And now we can see it because the moon was once a part of the earth. Now, how do we get earth out of this? Take these two numbers, six, six. Six plus six equals 12. The moon dropped or went up 12,000 miles high. If we multiply six times six, we get 36. And 36 was the amount dropped of the earth when she separated from the moon 36,000 miles. So in the Bismillah, and this is the beauty of the methodology that we were taught, you can take letters, numbers, words, you can combine them in all kinds of ways, and you will get a deep root underlying uh, teaching other than what you're seeing on the surface. So you can go as deep, deep, deep as you can go. Mathematics is the key. It's interesting, I just happened to see this. If six and eight, and three and four, 48, okay, that represents something else, but in application to what we've been studying about a wheel and a wheel, I, we pointed out that Ezekiel makes up 48 chapters, which goes into the make of this wheel that has never been made before, and God then is identified as being seen in the clouds, and that uh, the hearts of people will be, you know, perplexed, and all kinds of... Uh, Disasters will befall the planet when they look up and see the Son of Man coming down from the heavens. Now, um, going back, I wanted to show you. So we have the flag of Islam, number per number. Sun, moon, and the earth, and its um, declination to 36,000 miles out of its original pocket. Now we will go back. I'll leave that there for a moment. Now let us go back here. Out of the sphere or circle, in the circle, our national flag, the universe, Islamic uh, studies base can come out of this, the Holy Quran's uh, mathematical code of 19. What I did was take the seven colors of the rainbow and make in each one of these quadrants, entering into the circle sphere here, and you will put in, it's not marked here, 22 sections of the lesson. So that every day, and this is the reading program that I will recommend, it's very easy, 22 and color tab each day. You can choose the colors that you wish to represent, but each day choose a color tab. That, and in that period of time, every member of the family will read 22 parts of the lessons. You just read it, 22 from student enrollment, and then you'll go over and you'll hit 22 somewhere in the actual facts. And then you go down from actual facts, you will count another 22, and that will take you into lesson number one. Then the next sequential lesson is lesson number two, then the 34 problems, and English lesson number C1. When you separate and find the 22, 22, seven times in the lessons, you will read in one week 22 parts of the lesson per day until you just read them through once a week. You can repeat that. Pretty soon you will have memorized by heart without, you know, too much difficulty. And you just read them. You don't have to stop and just keep reciting it over and over. It all depends on you. But at least minimal requirement is to read 22 parts of the lesson each day. And each day will correspond uh, to a different color. Now in the 13 instructions, to get familiar with them and read, you would expand your seven days reading assignment by reading two paragraphs of the 13 instructions per day. As you read these 
uh, two on Sunday or the last day, it will be one, which is the 13th paragraph. Now I will erase this. I think I have just about completed the explanation here that I wanted to accept. I'm going to say that is amazing. There is a book called The Temple in Man. Some of you, you know, may have access to it. But in that book, it tells you through a scholar, Libanetz from France, who studied many, many years at the Temple of Luxor. And remember the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, study the monuments in Egypt. Well, he made a, a, a very lengthy study of the Luxor temple and the reliefs of the way that the pharaohs were etched and carved, you know, into the wa temple walls. And it was exactly the ancient Egyptians who utilized these two principal formulas that I pointed out today, the number 19 and 227 as a fraction. And they did what you call quadratures. And in these quadratures, they measured the pharaoh's head all the way down to his feet. And they utilized either or, 19 quadratures or the pi fraction of 22, 7. So we'll talk more on that uh, later. But what I wanted to put up on the board now goes back to the beginning uh, of the August 23rd and the presentation made by the chairperson, uh, Dr. Abdul um, Alim. And what he put on the screen was fascinating. It kept flashing. Whoops, are we going to see this? OK. Atonement. OK, atonement and then commission. And by using this methodology, I kept looking and looking, and I said, oh, wow. I said, atonement has nine letters, and commission has 10 letters. And of course, adding them together, you have 19. And I said, my goodness, everything is absolutely coded. I mean, we can't get away from it, whatever we do, there is a coded language that is embedded in the presentation itself. And in the word commission, if you break it up, it says, come, come, to the mission. So we are being asked by God, through his representative, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, to come to the mission. What is the mission? It is the resurrection of our mentally dead people. To come to the mission, come, uh, mission how? Through atonement, which is an atone, which can be then mathematically and musically scaled. Because beneath all of this, we have diagrams which will show you that underlying the codes is a musical scale of sound. But atonement, to be at one, with whom? With God first, and with yourself, and then with those around you. So now, look at what else you can do. This is with our children too. It makes it like games to play, but very interesting. Come, I, mit, take your word up here, commit, mint. Interesting. So we want to come to the mission to be committed to the service mm -hmm, of Almighty God, Allah, through the working out of self, and then um, everything else will fall into place. OK, so there's your 19. So the signature of God is on the commission. <laughs> now the next and final part of my presentation today will go this way. He also put on the board in the very beginning, Dr. Aline, he pointed out that the um, organization of the committee, okay, for 
76 Constitution and the July 4th Declaration of Independence from 1776. Now this is a very interesting discovery. The Savior came 1930 and he brought with him the code in himself and he had already prepared a body of knowledge and wisdom to share. If you take the lessons, one, five, four, the code of the lessons, and you add it to 1776, you will get the year, exactly 1930, when Master Farad Muhammad came. So I'm going to leave you shortly with this thought and with these words. If this presentation has had some meaning for you to see the beauty and the wisdom that we were given in the supreme wisdom lessons of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and to be back on track again and follow the guidelines and instructions of the Honorable Minister Farrakhan, I hope that this has helped to widen your comprehension and understanding of the value of this most beautiful assignment and opportunity that we have to move from the left 286.1 pyramid inches to go right 286.1 pyramid inches which takes us into all of the beautiful studies of the Holy Quran itself. As I entered into this day which is August uh, 28th I opened the Quran for guidance and I mark the place, and it takes us right back to the Honorable Minister Farrakhan's instructions to us recently on that day, August 23rd, about the importance of prayer. And I opened to Surah 17, Section 9, and it says, Truth will prevail. And the focus is on prayer. And the focus is on being truthful. And I would like to close in my presentation today by reading that section, beginning with verse 78. Keep up prayer from the declining of the sun till the darkness of the night and the recital of the Quran at dawn. Surely the recital of the Quran at dawn is witnessed. And during a part of the night, Keep awake by it, beyond what is incumbent on thee. Maybe thy Lord will raise thee to a position of great glory. And to say, my Lord, make me enter a truthful entering, and make me go forth a truthful going forth, and grant me from thy presence an authority to help me. And to say, the truth has come, and falsehood vanished. Surely falsehood is ever bound to vanish. And we reveal of the Qur'an that which is a healing and a mercy to the believers. And it adds only to the perdition of the wrongdoers. And when we bestow favors on man, he turns away and behaves proudly. And when evil afflicts him, he is in despair. Say, everyone acts according to his manner. But your Lord best knows who is best guided on the path. I thank you for your attention as I leave you the greetings of peace and paradise and prayers for our success to be accepted by God. Assalamu alaikum.